Welcome back to the Ultimate Mixdown. In this video, I want to open your eyes up to the world of possibilities with mouse modifiers and keyboard shortcuts. Whether you're new to Reaper or coming over from another DAW, this is a great way to get your workflow up and running quickly, and this will save you a lot of time in the long run if you put just a little extra effort up front. So let's dive right in. Now the first thing I'll talk about are the mouse modifiers. So mouse modifiers are the keys that you can hold down on your keyboard that when using some kind of action on your mouse, like a scroll, a click, or a drag, will change the behavior of how the mouse works in a particular context of the software. And by context, I mean what window or part of a window you're working in. So the track control panel is a specific context. The arrange view is a specific context. The media item itself is its own context. So if I click and drag over here, it might behave differently than if I click and drag inside this window, or if I click and drag the media item itself. And what we're trying to do is find ways that we can speed up our workflow. And we're going to see what are the more common things that we do in a specific window or a specific context. And how can we learn either the default mouse modifiers that are provided for us, or how can we adjust those modifiers so that it improves our efficiency working with the software, be it tracking, recording, editing, or mixing. To access the preferences, hold command and press comma on a Mac, or hold control and press comma on a PC. You can also go to Reaper preferences. And we're going to scroll down to editing behavior and then mouse modifiers. Now, as I mentioned before, the mouse modifiers are based off of a particular context. The one we're going to focus on primarily is the media item. So that's this blue item in the background here. Now, the mouse actions that you have to work with are provided for you by Reaper. So if you click this drop down, you can see when I'm working with a media item, I can either double click it, left click it, or left drag it. And depending on what key I hold down while I do those actions, the behavior is going to change. So here the default action of left dragging a media item in Reaper is to move the item ignoring the time selection. And what that means is regardless of where my playback is in the ruler or what I've selected in the ruler, I'll be able to click and drag this media item. So if you look at this media item in the background, if I click and drag right now, it's behaving by the default, which is move media item ignoring time selection. But if I hold down a key command, say opt, it's going to copy the item. That's how powerful key commands are. So one thing that I like to do when working with media items in the arrange view is I like to have the grid lines enabled and I like to have the snap enabled. And what this means is when I drag this media item left and right, it's gonna snap to the grid. And then I've set a mouse modifier here to hold the command key and that would move the media item ignoring the snap. So I could freely move the item and make fine tune adjustments when necessary. Now, when you see a bullet point here, that means that I've made some kind of alteration to the mouse modifier. So it's not what came standard with Reaper. It's not the default. So for example, this isn't the default for holding shift while left dragging a media item. And to change the behavior of a media item, all you have to do is double click and then select the action that you want to change that behavior to. So the way that I've set up my mouse modifiers for my media item on the left drag is the default action will just move it and snap it to the grid when the grid is on. Shift will move the item contents within the media item. Command will move the media item ignoring the snap. Option will copy the media item. And then you can even go from there. So if I hold Command and Shift, I've set that to move the item contents ignoring the snap. So now instead of it snapping the audio within the media item, I can freely move that audio as I please. Now you can go a little crazy with setting these mouse modifiers. So one thing I highly recommend is having a specific purpose for each of the keys that you're holding down. So for example, I tend to use Option or Alt as a way to copy things. So if I'm working with media items, for example, holding the Alt and dragging over will copy the media item. If I had effects on my insert in a mixer window, I would hold Alt to copy the effects over. And then for me, if I'm working with a Mac, command is used for fine tuning. Otherwise on a PC, it would be control. And by fine tuning, I mean making micro adjustments. So if I'm moving these media items and I don't want it to snap at a great scale and I just want to slowly drag it left and right, I'll hold command. And then I've also set mouse modifiers on different editing behaviors too. So the same thing goes with an edge edit. So we can go to media item edge. And I've set this so that if I click and drag the edge, it'll expand or reduce the media item based off of where I drag it and snap it to the grid when grid is enabled. But if I hold command, 
it'll make a fine tune adjustment so I can sneak that edge right up on the beginning of the waveform. And then I can insert a fade and have a nice seamless transition into this media item. Along the lines of fine tuning, the default action on left clicking an immediate item is to select the item and move the edit cursor. So if I click and I'm close to this grid line, it'll move the edit cursor to this grid line. If I click over here, it'll still select the same media item, but move the edit cursor over here. I've updated the command mouse modifier with the left click so that it selects the item moving the edit cursor and ignoring the snap. So if I want to make a fine edit before this waveform right here, I hold command and I click within the media item. And then I can make my edit regardless of where the grid is. Mouse modifiers can be adjusted across all different types of contexts. If you're new to Reaper, you can work to learn the defaults that are provided. If you're coming over from another DAW, maybe you want to update these preferences so that it's more like the DAW that you are working in so that you can get up to speed faster. One thing I want to point out is if you go and you change a behavior for a specific mouse modifier, say you change this to set loop points to item, this flag will show you that you've made a change. If you decide that you don't like that change and you want to go back to the default behavior, you double click once again. And then under the menu, it shows the current selection, but it also shows you what the default behavior was before you made that selection. Now that just touches on the world of mouse modifiers. But even more exciting is the actions list. So in Reaper, you have access to all of the actions in the system where you can add key commands or keyboard shortcuts that you can use to apply those actions much quicker than if you had to go through menus or clicking buttons and so forth. So to access the actions list, select the question mark on your keyboard. The way to do that is to hold shift and press slash. So the first thing I want to point out is you could click on any of these actions in the list and click run and it will apply that action right away. But the real power behind the actions list is by setting keyboard shortcuts. Now to set a keyboard shortcut, you would filter on the action that you're looking to set that shortcut to. So let's say split items, and then you can see that the S shortcut is already there. So if I press S in my media item, it will split that item. Now if I wanted to add a different value instead of S, you can click add, and then all you have to do is type the shortcut on your keyboard. So if I wanted it to be the letter X, for example, I'll just type X, and then I'll click OK. And if that shortcut is already being used by another action, then you'll get a warning in Reaper letting you know that so you don't mistakenly set a different behavior to a keyboard shortcut without at least knowing that you're going to override the mapping. In addition to that, you can also find a shortcut by clicking Find Shortcut, and all you have to do, again, is type the key on the keyboard. So I typed X, and it'll bring me to the shortcut that's mapped to the letter X on my keyboard, which is Remove Fade In and Fade Out. If I have a Fade In and a Fade Out on a media item, and I press the X key, it's going to remove those fades. Now you can imagine it's going to take a little bit of time to set up if you're not used to this, but once you are set up and you're well versed in the keyboard shortcuts that you have available, instead of having to make all these edits manually with a mouse, you can just type a key on your keyboard and it'll automatically do it for you. So if I want to remove the fades on multiple media items, instead of me clicking and dragging the start and end fades of all those media items, I can just click the media item, press the X key, and it'll remove the fades. Move on to the next one. And that's why knowing keyboard shortcuts is powerful, but being able to make your own keyboard shortcuts is power to the extreme. Now, not only can you make shortcuts with the keys on your keyboard, but you can also make shortcuts tied to the mouse wheel on your mouse, for example. So one thing I wasn't accustomed to when I came over to Reaper from Pro Tools was how the arranged view behaves with the mouse. When you scroll the mouse wheel up and down, when you hold shift and scroll the mouse wheel or alt or command, Pro Tools had different behaviors mapped to those actions than Reaper does. To get up and running quickly, I made the necessary adjustments so that it felt more like Pro Tools. So very simple, I wanted to be able to scroll up and down in the software just by using the mouse wheel. I didn't want to have to press any mouse modifiers. So if I extend this down beyond the page, I'm just using the mouse wheel up and down. Additional mouse wheel shortcuts that I've implemented, holding the Alt or the Option key while scrolling on the mouse wheel zooms in and out on the waveform. And specifically, I have it set to wherever the mouse is pointing. In addition to scrolling vertically and zooming in and out, I've also set scrolling horizontally by holding the shift key and then using the mouse wheel. So to find that shortcut, you click find shortcut, you hold shift, scroll on the mouse wheel, and then it'll bring you to the action that has shift plus mouse wheel, which is scroll horizontally. This lets me scroll left and right in the arrange view while I'm holding the shift key. 
And then the last mouse wheel action that I've set is by holding the command key and scrolling on the mouse wheel will adjust the track height. So if I'm holding command and I scroll down, it reduces the track height. And if I hold command and I scroll up, it increases the track height. Now, if I wanted to set this to a different mouse wheel action, I would just click add as if I was to set a different keyboard shortcut. And then if I didn't want it to be command mouse wheel, but I'd rather it be control mouse wheel, or if I wanted to add control mouse wheel in addition to command mouse wheel, I can just hold control and scroll on the mouse wheel and then click OK. So now here you see I have control plus mouse wheel and command plus mouse wheel as my zoom vertically option. Now just with the keyboard shortcuts for the mouse wheel alone, you can see how this is going to save time. Because instead of adjusting every track by clicking and dragging up and down, or by grabbing your scroll bar and moving to the right or to the left, or grabbing your scroll bar and moving up or down, you can just hold a key command and use your mouse wheel. Now another thing to point out is when you're adding a keyboard shortcut, some keys are considered special keys, like enters, tabs, so forth. So if you want to map those types of keys, you have to click the special key here, and then it lets you type the special key, so I'll hit enter, or on a Mac, return, and then it'll map that key here for the shortcut. And then you can go ahead and click OK. Just keep in mind, whenever you're overriding an existing shortcut, it's not a bad idea to take note of what the shortcut used to be before overriding it. Now the last thing I want to point out in the Actions menu is that you can actually click on Key Map and import a shortcut's key map. So other users have already created shortcut key maps, so you could go online and you could look up for a key map where it might make the system behave a little more like Pro Tools. And then you can automatically get in a lot of those keyboard shortcuts without having to do these manual updates. Additionally, if you have a shortcut key map that you want to share with others, you can export your shortcut key map and share it with others. So now with the information I've shared with you, I urge you to go out there, learn the keyboard shortcuts, learn the mouse modifiers, play around in your system, make changes, but also make note of what the default was in case you want to go back to it at another time. I guarantee you, if you put the extra time in now, this will highly improve your workflow and it will save you tons of time. It'll save you tons of time tracking. It'll save you tons of time editing. It'll save you tons of time mixing. And eventually, you'll find yourself using these shortcuts without thinking twice about the keys that you're pressing. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions on how to apply mouse modifiers or how to apply actions or how to key map or anything like that, don't hesitate to leave a comment below. If you found this video useful, please click the like button. And if you haven't yet and you want to stay up to date on the latest Ultimate Mixdown videos, click the subscribe button. And I hope to see you back here at the Ultimate Mixdown real soon.